Hey gang, Scott here. On one released an update to Photo Raw 2022.1, and this is not just a bug fix update. They've added a bunch of new features. In this video, I want to talk about the advanced search feature. And real quick, if you're thinking about Photo Raw or adding any of the on one tools or plugins to your workflow, check the show notes. I have an offer code down there. We'll save you 20%. Won't cost you anything extra. You give me a little support too, so I can do videos like this. So let's have a look at this advanced search feature in 2022.1. They've done some nice things here. So I am here in browse looking at my catalog folders, and you'll notice the first thing is there's no longer a search box that's in the left hand panel search has moved to an actual icon right here this advanced search area but there's something else i want to point out first is the filter bar at the very bottom so there is like a mini search engine built into browse just at your fingertips right down here at the bottom we have filtering for real common attributes as well as a text field and this is very handy because the, the view that you're looking at, let me open up my cataloged folders. I'm looking at this folder here and I have show subfolder contents turned on. So I'm looking at everything in my processing class hierarchy here. Well, I can quickly drill down say, just show me the four star photos. Cool, great. Um, maybe I want to look for things that have something to do with tree. And the reason I chose tree is twofold. I have some photos with trees. We can see that here. But there's a few that don't have trees, like these here. Well, those, um, if I type in the word street, you'll see those photos show up because tree is within street. So this text search here, it is truly just a text search. It will search everything about your photo, file names, keywords, cities, locations, anything. And if it finds the string that you put in there, like when I put in tree, it's going to find everything. But this is very, very handy. And what I like about the filter is it is sticky. Let's let's clear tree and maybe change this to just four stars and perhaps like a purple label. And as I go down into other folders, like into say dodge and burn, I'm now searching this particular folder of images, my filter is still set. So if you're really just kind of hunting around for something and you kind of know which folder it's in, not quite sure, but you know something about its attributes, the filter can get you there very quickly. But now let's dig into the advanced search because when you're, when you're doing like your ad hoc things, I want a rating, uh, I want a particular keyword, filter bar will get you far the advanced search really opens up some possibilities. So let's have a look at this. Let's open up the advanced search dialog and I'll give you a tour of the interface and then show you some examples of how you can use it. Uh, so first at the top, you have saved searches. So anytime you've finished defining a particular search, you can save it down here at the very bottom. You have save new style. That's kind of the, the, the term that on one uses for a lot of its saved things, whether you're talking about filters or import presets or things. You save it as a style, but it really is a saved search. Uh, next is the source. Now current photos, that's uh, what we defaulted to. This is really similar to what we were doing with the filter bar where I'm looking at the current set of photos. Right now I'm looking at this processing class top folder and I have the subfolders turned on so I see everything. Uh, this dialog here, I can click outside of it. I can just say, oh, well, let me just look at my dynamic range. Notice my search box is still there, or maybe I want to look here. You can start to look in different hierarchies of your library right here with the search. And depending on what you're searching for, this could behave similar to the filter bar. If you're just searching for ratings or a particular uh, phrase like tree in my example, you can just do that with the filter bar. If you're searching for more detailed criteria, it's nice that this is a floating dialogue and you can do things outside of the search box to change your view. Um, I like to use this across my cataloged folders, but you can see there's a lot of choices here. You can search your current photos, your catalog folders, your cloud sync folders. If you choose search all, it's gonna, you know, I'm gonna search your entire computer. So use that one with, with care if you have a lot of photos or a, a very large set of hard drives. Uh, you can also be specific about the individual cataloged folders you have. When I'm using advanced search, I like to search across my cataloged folders. 
that, um, that makes most sense for me. The last part we have is the search criteria. And you'll notice the add field button where we can define all our criteria. Well, we have a few choices. We can match all the rules we define, any single one, or you can do an exclusion type of search. You know, show me everything except something else. When I'm searching, I tend to use the all of the following rules. And I think about my rules like funnels. Like the first rule is maybe a rating. I want things that are four stars or higher. I'm interested in looking at, say, my best work. But then within that set, I want to funnel it down even farther to, I'm not sure, let's say, things that I've edited. Now that's actually, that's a good example. Let's do that. I'll start with adding the, the rating field. And there are tons of filtering options here. There are tons of criteria we can set. Let's do rating and we'll say is greater than or equal to four stars, right? But I also said edited. So we have an edited and we have many other choices in here as well. Uh, I, I like edited, just have I edited the photo, yes or no? Okay, now I have a, a view where I've changed things, I've made some sort of adjustments to my photos in on one photo raw and I've got a nice view of those. Let me add one more criteria similar to the filter bar. In my world, I use color labels to track work. And if my color is purple, I know this photo is ready to be shared. And so now I have a filter that is not only checking out my ratings, it's checking the color label that I assigned during my workflow. It's also doing a sanity check that, hey, you know, there's been some edits applied to this. And so these are all ready to share. So I can save this as a search, right? I can go down here and say, great. Let's say new style and ready to share, right? So now I can pull this up anytime I need to and search my catalog folders. Or, or I can use the advanced search as a way to create some search criteria and then create a smart album for it. So a search like this, where it is your, your best work that's ready to share, or a, a view of work across a certain date period or things like that, often you wanna create that as an album you can go back to again and again. Well, smart albums came back in 2022.1, and so right here we can create this into a smart album. So I'll just call it the same thing. I'll just call it ready to share. If I can type without the caps, there we go, okay? And if I look over my Smart Albums area, I have this here. So anytime I want to find photos that I am ready to share, I can click my Smart Album. It's going to do all of this stuff for me. So this is one example of a advanced search to help find work that you're interested in, something you want to build together for a project. Uh, let's look at another example. This is a, a pretty typical type of search, uh, you know, like a, a best of, or you're searching across a date range for particular things. I, I'm not sure what I'm going to find in my library here, but we'll explore this together. So let's, um, let me clear everything here. Let's reset everything. And I'm looking at my cataloged folders. I'll right click and turn back on that show subfolder content so we can see everything. And for this, uh, once again, I'm usually interested in my, my best work. So I'll start by selecting a rating and is greater than or equal to four stars. Uh, but let me add a field for a date range. So we'll say a date range capture date is in the range. We have a range and we can say things like, let's just say the last five years, 2020, uh, sorry, 2016 to the end of 2021, that would be five years. Okay, here's five years of things. And um, I can still click outside of my search box, so I can change this to sort things by date captured. So now I have my oldest work all the way up to my newest work. I can do a quick at a glance, hmm, what kind of patterns do I see in the shooting? Am I improving, am I not improving? Just very quick glance kind of stuff. Uh, but you can also say, um, maybe I'm interested in architecture. So uh, let's say keyword architecture. What do we what do we end up with? A handful of photos, right? So if I'm looking for 
uh, a something to do a retrospective on. Maybe I take lots of pictures of boats and bridges and I can do a search to find those two types of things and then build up a, uh, you know, the last five years, show me this thing. I want to put together a book, something like that. So another way to sift through your various photos using advanced search. Now, another thing I like to do with advanced search is use it to study your own photography patterns. How are you using your camera? And for me, that's usually like I'm thinking about buying a new lens and maybe I don't need to. Maybe I'm just wanting to buy gear, but I, I don't necessarily need the gear. So I'd like to check my shooting patterns. Uh, for example, I know that I have a, uh, a bias toward wide angle photography. And so when I look at the photos in my library from a focal length point of view, I tend to see things on the, the, the wide angle end and not at the telephoto. So that newer telephoto lens comes along and it's like, hmm, that looks pretty interesting. I'll sanity check myself and say, all right, well, are you doing that type of work? Of course, I could flip that around and say, there's an opportunity to go learn there. Let me show you how you can do that in the advanced search thing. So once again, I'll reset this. We'll go into search the cataloged folders. And we have, I'll use all of the following rules. In the camera section, we have focal length. And once again, in the range. And let's just say something really wildly wide to maybe 30 millimeter, okay? And what I'm looking at here is not so much the photos that show up, it's the number in the upper right corner, right? Up at the top of the toolbar here, 663. That's what it's telling me for this focal length. All right, let me turn that one off. I'll add a second one, camera, focal length, in the range, and let's say maybe 30 to 80, okay? Well, now I have 74. I'm already showing that my bias is squarely toward wide angle. I could keep going with this, right? I can turn that off and play some of these ad hoc games here just to do some basic reporting against my own shooting patterns. And let's say 81 to uh, 200. I think that's the longest lens that I have. And I've got four plus a sample photo from on one. So I can't even count that, uh, that fifth photo. But you get the idea here, right? You can use the advanced search to take a look at your own shooting patterns. And so exploring this camera area where maybe you wanna check out aperture, are you thinking about getting a lens that has a shallower depth of field? Uh, or um, are you using a certain lens? You know, your, your lens here, you can, you can search for particular phrases or you know types of lens. So if you know from, if I choose a photo, let's choose this photo here. We have you know Nikon, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You could put all of that stuff in here to search for. Am I using that particular kind of lens? Am I is is a lens I don't use anymore? Maybe I should consider selling it. There's a lot of opportunities here, not only to find the photos that you want to share on social media, put on your website, build into a project, but also to look at your own shooting patterns and it can help you make some decisions about your photography, whether it's something to do with gear or it's something like an area of photography that you might want to explore more. Like in my case, I should probably look at doing more telephoto work. And I've probably said that to myself for the last five years based on the, uh, the quick searches we've been doing here on this segment of my library. Well, that is advanced search. I hope you found the video useful and it gives you a good solid foundation so you can build up your own searches and improve your photography. Any other questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.